everybody. Welcome back to GR Research. This is Danny Ritchie again with the next Tuesday's Tech Talks. We are following up on the groundwork that we laid last week on the comb filtering effects. And today we're going to get to have a little fun. We're going to get to do what I like to do and that's we're going to get to do some measuring and testing. And you're actually going to see the effects of having two tweeters on the same baffle and the comb filtering effects that that causes. And I, I wanted to do this episode because I know there's a lot of companies out there that will put two tweeters on the same front baffle. You know, one speaker, two tweeters, because from a marketing standpoint, two tweeters has got to be better than one tweeter. I mean, it'll handle twice as much power and it's twice as good because there's two of them, right? Well, no, not necessarily. Uh, when you have two tweeters on the same baffle, you, you get the same, um, issue that we talked about last week where we have comb filtering effects where we have we have one source producing a wavelength we have another source producing the same wavelength same amplitude and as soon as one is delayed in time just a little bit versus the other by changing the listening height or changing where you're measuring from even a little bit uh, and I mean just a little bit of change is enough for the wavelengths to be out of phase because the upper frequency ranges the wavelengths are real short and that's what happens so we're gonna get to see it first I'm gonna give you a little bit of a look around at the measuring system and show you how we're measuring it uh, the way we're measuring it here it's a called a gated time window measurement and I get the exact same measurement that I would have gotten at our old facility in our anechoic chamber that we had over there. Uh, the only difference is we're limited as to how low in frequency range we can measure. When we were in the anechoic chamber, obviously we had zero room reflections, so we could measure right down into you know the lower frequency ranges. When you have a uh, a speaker set up in a room and you're just doing a gated time window, you can only measure as low in frequency as you can move the microphone for far away. You know, to measure lower in frequency, the wavelengths get longer, you have to move the microphone further away. And you can't do that in a room because you'll start then picking up the room reflections. If you stay, and in my room, I can get about 56 inches away, that's about as far away as I can get before the room reflection becomes part of the measurement. So. That's kind of a limit, but most of what I do is a one watt, one meter measurement, which is an industry standard, and um, you can gate out uh, about a four millisecond time window. So you're you're starting it as the wave front starts, and you're letting it pass, and then within a four millisecond window, you're putting a stop mark, and you can see the exact same measurement with no room reflections at all. And that's what we're doing here. We've got some speakers set up. We're going to do some measurements. You're going to get to see it and we'll try to drop in the exact measurements and I'll talk about it and show you exactly what happens. Um, and what you're going to see is going to be exactly the same regardless of what company you're looking at. Uh, the laws of physics really don't change. There's no pixie dust somebody sprinkling over it to make things uh, not have comb filtering effects. If they're playing the same frequency range you're going to have comb filtering effects. And I know a lot of speaker companies will put the tweeters in an orientation where they've got two tweeters, they've got one right over another. Some companies will spread them over a little bit to where it you know, fills out the baffle a little bit, looks real cool, but the effects are still the same. You're changing the axis in which the comb filtering occurs. Instead of just being in the vertical axis, you're changing it to vertical and horizontal axis whenever you're changing the orientation but you're still going to get comb filtering and I'm going to show you guys exactly what that means. Okay guys, here's the uh, measuring system that we have set up. We have uh, a pair of our old AV1 kits. It's uh, an inexpensive kit that we offer and uh, this is an older version of it we've had in storage for a while. I just pulled them out. It's got a couple of dome tweeters on it which is um, going to work uh, for what we're illustrating just fine. I've got the microphone at one meter away and we've carefully or I've carefully placed the microphone so that it is starting out dead center so it's absolutely in the middle between the two tweeters or between the two speakers so that when we start we're going to get the exact same distance from each set of drivers and I'm going to do again a gated time window so that 
we don't have any room reflections in this measurement at all. We're only looking at exactly what the speaker does and that's it. So now we're going to move over here to the measurements and we're going to take a look at those and I'm going to walk you through that stuff and we're going to see what it does. Okay guys, hopefully you can see a little bit of me. You're going to see a little bit of the screen. Uh, I'm going to walk you through some of the measurements, let you see what's happened, uh, give you an idea of what comb filtering really does and how easily it can cause huge response issues in the measurements and, and what you hear. Let's start with uh, the impulse response. This is, uh, as I was telling you, this is the, the wave as it initiates from the speaker and this is it dying out over time. What I'm doing is I'm gating this window. I'm, I'm telling it, I want it to start right here. I want it to stop right here. That's about a four millisecond window. That's a good range to allow me to see everything it's doing. If we look further out in time here and we see this little wiggle right in here starting, that's the floor and ceiling reflections that are reaching the microphone. And we're gating that out long before it reaches that point. So first, let's look at um, the frequency response measurements. Um, this is one of the speakers and the gray line is the other speaker. So if we look at the pair, they lay almost right on top of each other. You're looking at it as plus or minus a dB and a quarter to a dB and a half through most of its range. The top end on these, this older model is it's dropped off just a little bit on this particular pair. That was uh, just something of that particular matched pair of tweeters is a little soft on top. But uh, overall, really smooth response. Um, you know, it's kind of a reference level, flat all the way across. Uh, these are 5 dB increments here, so you can see it's well within that range. So what I'm going to do here is I want to show you the speaker that's on the bottom. That's The red line is the speaker that's on the bottom. And then whenever we play both speakers at the same time, what we got was this blue line. And I've kind of moved it up to where it's, it's close to the top because we're going to wind up filling most of this screen up here. Um, when you when you have two speakers playing the same thing, you're getting a 6 dB gain. So you go up basically 6 dB across the board and it's very difficult to get the microphone dead center in the middle of the two speakers so that the output is the same all the way across and it's 6 dB up. Uh, even, uh, even with it dead center there, I've still got just a little bit of a drop here at the top. Maybe I'm not getting completely 6 dB. It's more like 5.5. It's just really hard to get dead center. So this next line that I'm going to drop up on here is what happened after I moved the microphone down in height by 2 inches. 2 inches. Not a big movement from a meter away. I mean, that, that, we're talking small incremental movements. So first, you see the orange line here. The orange line is just the bottom speaker playing again. The, and the movement made very little difference in the response. The drivers actually became in phase a little more in this range right here. It picked up about three-fourths of a dB, but overall pretty smooth. Next, I played them both at the same time. And if you notice the purple line as it came up there, uh, in the upper frequency ranges, the whole upper frequency range just took a huge dump right there. Uh, it's down a lot. I mean, we're down uh, near 15, 15 dB uh, right at the top end. That is comb filtering. That is the time arrival of one tweeter in relation to the other tweeter delayed very slightly. And if you think about it, at a meter away and the microphone has just moved two inches that's a very little movement, but you also have to remember the wavelengths at 20K Hertz are really, really short also. So it doesn't take much of a movement for it to cause a big cancellation. Next, I moved the mic down two more inches, just two inches. So four inches total at one meter. And the yellow line that I'm pulling up now shows just the bottom speaker. And again, little to no change in output in the, in the single speaker playing. Now watch what happens when I drop the light blue line on. That is both speakers playing at the same time. If you'll notice now there's a huge suck out 
that's centered at about 11 K Hertz and not only is it just a huge suck out but look how much lower in output it is than if it were just a single tweeter we're talking um, 12 or 13 DB less output than the single tweeter was creating on just the one speaker so it's another one of those situations where one plus one doesn't equal two when they're out of phase with each other and they're canceling each other they equal much less than one and then finally I move the microphone down two more inches one more time just two more inches one more time the white line is just the lower speaker playing only and as you can see it just dropped it right on top of the last measurement almost there's hardly any change at all uh, in in the response of the speaker from just changing the measuring height another two inches but as I drop the green line on look what happens to the output of the pair whenever I move it another two inches as you see there's a huge suck out in the looks like 6k hertz range there's a secondary suck out where things are also out of phase at about 2.8 K Hertz. So we're getting multiple suck outs and the output is reduced mm, all the way back here to about 600 Hertz. We're already starting to see a change in output from the cancellation of the time arrival differences of the drivers. So as you can see, adding a second tweeter doesn't necessarily give you added output and a lot of frequency ranges you're getting a lot less output and the important thing to remember is when you have comb filtering going on within a speaker like that um, what it's doing to the in-room response is basically what you're seeing in the off-axis response imagine how the, re the reflection from the ceiling and floor looks you're going to gain output in the ceiling and floor reflections down here but in the upper frequency ranges you're not going to have that gain in output so things are going to be out of balance uh, things within the sound stage aren't going to be where they're really supposed to be uh, because your overall in-room response is a big hole in you know in various areas so overall not a great idea uh, like a like I said before, these measurements are going to be similar uh, with any speaker out there that has multiple high frequency drivers in it where they're both playing the same frequency range. If you have any questions, um, put them in the comments section, fire them over there to our forum over at the Audio Circle. Uh, you're welcome to start a discussion. If you want to tag a couple of these loudspeaker companies that uh, have speakers that have multiple tweeters and say, hey, look at this, what do you think? Uh, you guys can do whatever you want to do. Um, I can, I'll be glad to uh, get into a discussion with any of these guys on a technical basis. Uh, you guys are feel, you know, feel free to whatever you want to do. This is for your education purposes. So ask questions, learn it. Uh, hopefully it helps you and it helps you identify issues that may be out there with certain models or certain speakers. And uh, hope you enjoyed it. And I'll see you again next time where we look at other aspects of comb filtering and other applications where comb filtering is causing problems. Thanks a lot. Have a good one. inches. Two inches.